I've always wanted to be a veterinarian. Uh, super cheesy, but since I was three, just like a lot of people, my dad was a Baltimore City police officer, a canine unit, so I did grow up with working dogs and was very familiar with them. My dad was also a former Navy, and so we always had really good health care and coverage through TRICARE. It just made me think about my family, and I thought, well, I can I could take care of my family that way, you know? And so I graduated in 2007, and then I've been moved to Northeast Ohio and have been working there since. So I became a veterinarian before I joined the military. I was 33, I had been practicing for six years, and I ended up joining the Army. So I, I run the Boston Marathon every year. I'm an you know, incredibly fit person, so I thought, well, the physical fitness part's not tough. I have a job, so I can go in as a direct commissioned officer um, as a veterinarian, so I can do that on the civilian side and on the military side. There was a rumor um, probably about like a year out that our unit might get deployed and to Afghanistan. It was probably six months out that I got official orders. I think it wasn't until, I don't know, like like almost right before we were, where it was like, wow, this is really happening when I like told my boss, okay, this is gonna be my last day of work, so I have a couple days with my family before flying out. I um, then was assigned to, I had the northeast and central portions of the country, and I had about 109 working dogs to take care of. I think the similarities would be you get a lot of regular sick call like you would um, stateside. So like again, paw pad injuries or vomiting, diarrhea. Gunshot wounds was probably one of my like newest things that I had to be get used to and figure out explosions, what to do. Because um, even if they nothing gets blown off of them, you don't know what type of internal trauma could have occurred, especially if they're in an MRAB that exploded. I got a call just saying there was a dog with a gunshot wound. So we loaded up in the ambulance, got to the hospital, um, and it was amazing how like quickly and every, everybody worked together. Um, they did a really good job. He had been bleeding a lot, and so um, tourniquets don't really work well on dogs. And so there's um, other things that we use on dogs and soldiers overseas, and one of it's called Extat, and they're like little foam things that are coming like um, an injector gun, and you can inject it into a wound, and they will help clots and stop the bleeding. Um, so they had injected a bunch down into the wound, and then there's an IT clamp, which actually has these like large teeth that sink into the skin, clamp it, and it closes it together. And even if your femoral artery is bleeding, it will stop it, you will not bleed out. So it's really done wonders in saving lives for service members and, and the dogs. And so the, the ranger team did a great job on you know getting him stabilized. Um, the anesthesiologist was keeping him under, so they they were doing a, a really wonderful job, but you know now he's been under for over four hours under anesthesia, and who only knows what else got shoved in there. And I guess because when they were dragging him around, IV catheters would come out and they'd replace them. And so you know you're just thinking, and they're not scrubbing and being sterile. You know they can't be sterile out there. So when he got in, you know we had um, we X-rayed him, then we put him through a CT scanner, kind of locate where the bullet is. Uh, the surgeon worked with me, the human surgeon, and you know was telling me, okay, well let's you know like when we go after a bullet, when we don't. So there's plenty of people that walk around with bullets, so it's not a big deal. So we weren't going after the bullet the location was in. It actually did not hit any vital organs, but we would cause more trauma going in after it. So it was more just wound care, honestly. And so that's a sad thing, so we cultured it. So while we're waiting for lab results, you know, I mean, we did start them on antibiotics, but just a broad spectrum, like, I think we just had him on Spazolin, and. He did fine, he woke up, he was doing really well, and then he had spiked a fever, and then by the time we got the results in, um, he was actually, it was sensitive to only one antibiotic. By that time, he was, he was already septic, unfortunately. The human hospital did have that, but it's not one that's routinely used in veterinary medicine, so he unfortunately went into cardiac arrest, and we you know, performed CPR and tried to you know, save him, but we lost him. And that was just heartbreaking, and especially for the handler, um, you know, because that dog saved seven lives that night. And so it's just, it's it's really hard for them. So we did, um, we had a ceremony and everything, and then um, the dog was cremated, and then he brought the dog back with him. That way he could be buried um, at their at their place in Georgia. So the only thing we can do from that is learn from it and just make changes to make things better for better care for future injuries. The ranger veterinarian and I made some changes to some of the protocols that now they can carry that antibiotic out there places or even just having it at the vet hospital. So we, we kind of changed our SOPs, our standard operating procedures from this you know incident to try to better care for dogs that run into this in the future. 
I, I, I love it and I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it back or change it, but I don't, I don't know that it's for everybody. Um, it, it might be a good way. I mean, obviously in hindsight, if I would have joined the Army and had it pay for veterinary school, I would be debt free. You know, that's something that could be an option for some people thinking about being, going to vet school because they can still serve, learn a lot, and, you know, have a shorter commitment. And then if they want to stay in, great. And if they don't, you know what? They, they served a little bit, which is great. They've got their loans taken care of and they learned a lot. And so I'd probably encourage more of that, right? I think I, I definitely had a non-traditional way about things, but still enjoyed every minute of it so far. Thank you.